Well, a very good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and HomeBasedTravelAgent.com, I want to welcome all of you and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us today. We're going to learn more about what's new for the most all-inclusive luxury river cruise company today, and that company, of course, is Scenic Luxury Cruises. Our speaker is our good friend, Randy Goodrich, who is a trainer for both Scenic and Emerald Waterways and is the business development manager for agents in Idaho, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, Hawaii, Northern California, Utah, Colorado, and Texas. As always, we really appreciate the support we get from Scenic and Emerald. Before we get started, please remember that you're all muted, but we welcome your questions at any time. You can type them in on the right-hand panel of your screen. And at the end of Randy's presentation, we'll get to as many of those questions as we can. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to Randy so he can get started, and I will be back a little later. Welcome back, Randy. Thank you, Sandy. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody taking the time out of your schedule to learn more about Scenic. Uh, you are actually uh, one of the first to see our new logo. This was announced yesterday. Some of you may have received an email on the press release, um, so I'll, I'll explain that. Uh, before we move on, because it's a little bit different, uh, different look. And uh, since Scenic is a global company, they wanted to come up with a kind of a common uh, theme and uh, byline, etc., for all their marketing being done worldwide. Uh, so this is it. That, that little logo there. At the end of the presentation, I will show a little short video that will kind of tell you where we're headed as far as the, uh, you know, the the type of marketing we're going to do and what we're going to focus on, the messaging that we're going to have. So I look forward to that a little bit later. So first of all, let's talk about Scenic and uh, who they are and a little bit about River Cruises. Uh, which of your customers would be best fitted for a Scenic River Cruise? It's not for everybody, but it's for the people that uh, you have as customers who like the best and like to prepay for everything. So it's all inclusive, truly all inclusive. Uh, we'll show you how that uh, all comes together. So first of all, if you're not that familiar with river cruises, so I'll try to have this picture up. Um, most of the ships, uh, basically all of the river cruise ships in Europe have the same long, slender look, and that's due to the fact that the uh, you have to go through quite a few locks, and and also under bridges like this one here, the chain bridge in Budapest. Uh, and so there's restrictions on the maximum size the ship can be. It could be 443 feet length, and it can only be 40 feet wide. Otherwise, it won't fit into this block, some of the, some of the different locks and whatnot. So that's why they all kind of look the same. They typically all have three, three decks uh, with cabins. You can see the lower deck there, the small windows at the bottom just above the water. Those would be the crew cabins. And uh, in case of scenic, we only have about 14 cabins down there. A lot of other cruise lines have more, but we have more crews, so we can't have as many. Uh, and then all the cabins on the second and third deck for us have the balconies. I know it doesn't look exactly like a balcony, but you can kind of see in that picture. Uh, we have double pane uh, uh, windows on the outer part of the balcony so that uh, you can open and close and, and it let the fresh air come in. But if it's cold out or windy, you can still use the balcony but have the window closed. So some of these are open, some are closed. Uh, and then in the front part of the ship is where the lounge is up above and the restaurants down below. So that's uh, typically what all ships uh, you would see in Europe. Some are, are smaller, but none of them bigger. Of the 12 ships that Scenic has, uh, 10 of them are this maximum 443 feet in length. So we talk about Scenic as being the most all-inclusive. Uh, people say they're all inclusive. All every, I think every river cruise company says they're all inclusive because they include a little bit of, of everything. Um, but in our case, we we include a lot of everything. So uh, that's why we say they're we're the most all inclusive. We'll go up against anybody on that. Um, so first of all, butler service, all cabins. So even the, the lower price cabins have a butler assigned. The butler have a, a number of duties that they will perform. Uh, they can do room service in most of the cabins. The smaller ones are a little bit tougher. Uh, they can provide some shoe shining, uh, bring drinks down before dinner type of thing, be kind of a concierge for extra information, etc. So very nice feature to have. Again, I don't know that any other river cruise company has that. 
not aware of that. Uh, we have six dining menus where most of the cruise companies have one or two. We provide six because we like to give people a choice uh, so they're not kind of stuck uh, in the same routine every night. They can go and enjoy some other types of venues. All meals are included, of course, and all beverages. That's any kind of liquor, uh, soft drinks, fruit juices, mineral waters, you name it. That's all included both uh, in the room, in a mini bar, and also in our bar area and, and dining. <clears throat> that includes very, very good wines, a selection of wines, not just a red and a white, but a selection of different reds, a selection of different whites. So we try to meet everybody's interest there and what type of wine they like. Wi-Fi throughout the, uh, the ship uh, and a Mac mini computer in every room. All tips and gratuities both on board and on shore. Again, you have to be careful. Some companies will say they include for tips and gratuities. It would be only on board, not on shore. Those are extra. But in our case, everything that we provide, uh, we will also prepay handsomely the uh, tips to the people. Transfers with or without air. We don't care if you buy our air. Quite frankly, we just need to know when your customer is going to arrive. And we'll pick them up at the airport, get them to the ship, and uh, get them back to the airport at the end of the trip. Two or more tours each destination. Again, a lot of people say they're all inclusive. They include one tour a day. Uh, in our case, we have two or more. One of our primary focuses uh, for all these trips is to help people uh, have a better opportunity to uh, explore and understand and soak in the culture and history of these famous areas that we visit. So we want to give them different choices of different types of tours each day. We also have our e-bikes and our GPS system. I'll tell you more about those later. But it gives a whole other dimension to what they can do when they're on shore. And last, and certainly not least, are exclusive events. So very exclusive events that we have, dinners and castles, our private concerts, things like that that are only available to our clients, and it's all included in the price. A couple of things about Scenic. <clears throat> scenic Tours, it started off as Scenic Tours uh, in 1986. It's one of the larger tour companies in the world now, and it's uh, uh, primarily selling to the Australian, New Zealand, UK, and North American markets. So that would be the mix on board. Uh, right now it's still uh, probably a little stronger with the Australian mix and the New Zealand mix because we've been marketing there longer, but uh, US and Canada are quickly catching up and, and becoming more predominant on the ships and sailings. They got into the river cruise business in 2008 after doing some charters and some other carriers and uh, getting a feel for the for what's important, and then when Mr. Maroney, who owns the entire uh, scenic tours company and is our CEO, a very involved uh, owner, he uh, decided to build the ships. Uh, one of the things he decided he asked the people, his, his instruction people, is uh, why can't we have balconies? So he was the first one to have balconies in all the cabins, second and third deck. They originally, it just had a, a railing out there in the balcony. Now it's got that double glass panel. I'll show you a little later. So in, in 2012, that, amongst some other enhancements, uh, were, were made to the ships, five six ships that we had built so far, uh, and uh, other things like the multiple dining venues, the all-inclusive uh, liquor, and everything else. So that, that was all brought in in 2012, and all the ships since then, 12 in total now, uh, have all or most of those features. We own them all outright, all the ships. All 11, the 12th in Russia is owned by the Russian government, but that's their their law up there. They own the ships. Uh, <clears throat> so we sail the primary rivers of Europe right now: Rhine, Main, Danube, Rome, Seine, and Bordeaux this year. And I'll talk about 2016 a little bit later. We're going to we're entering some new markets. This is Mr. Moroni. This is the owner, the founder. He started right out of college uh, doing a bus tour and then grew up from there. And uh, this is kind of his explanation from the press release yesterday. I think rather than read the whole thing, it's the final uh, where he says, above all, we now have a much clearer idea of our mission, which is to help our guests discover the incredible wonder in the many locations we visit. And wonder is kind of the key word in our, our new marketing campaigns. So the differences with scenic cruises. 
uh, when we talk about it, we talk about our ships being a little different, our service and our destination focus. So the ships themselves, the luxurious ships, are like staying in a in a five star uh, plus hotel. Uh, so we have uh, fewer cabins typically when you compare it to ships of the same size. We'll have uh, 160 million passengers. Our cabins will be a little bit larger. Uh, but really, really important is the public area, especially the lounge, is uh, almost 25% larger than uh, most of the other competition. And that gives us the ability to have uh, more dining choices. So two of our dining choices, two of the six, are located in the lounge area. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and we have a very, very large bar because when you include all the free drinks and everything, that bar is a very popular place. Uh, it's pretty much all day long. So they can start uh, having a cocktail first thing in the morning and move on to whatever they like to do during the day. So all, all, all the liquor, all types of drinks, uh, waters, mineral waters, etc., all, all those things are included. All tips and gratuities, as we mentioned, in the butler service. But first and foremost is our focus on the destination, and nobody offers more choices. We just got an award this last couple of weeks from uh, the Luxury Travel Magazine in Australia as the best uh, cruise, small ship cruise line and the best tour company. And we are, our, uh, two of our ships uh, got in the top 10 award for the best luxury small ship. That includes not just river ships, but small ocean uh, ships too. So that was nice. So the journey starts for your customer when they arrive in Europe. We'll pick them up at the airport, take them to the ship. In this case, they're being greeted by the cruise director. We have our own professional cruise director on board uh, who basically interacts with the clients all, all the time they're on board to explain to them what we're doing each day and what these choices are and answer any other questions they have. The butler in the back is going to take the uh, luggage to the room and explain the, the features of the room, how to work the window on the balcony, things like that. So uh, that's how it starts. They get on board. They're going to see that it's a very elegant uh, style throughout the ship and the cabins. And this would be the lounge area. Uh, the, the, when you first walk in, this is the lounge. Uh, it's got uh, very, very soft, uh, warm, comfortable uh, colors to, to the decor. Uh, the window, of course floor to ceiling so you can see everything outside where we're going. That's mainly why we're doing the trip is to see what's out there and experience these wonderful destinations. Uh, the big screen TV there, we'll be doing a couple things on the overview system where it talks about where we're going, where we're headed. Look up some of the history, the same same deal is in the rooms as well. And then you've got a coffee pot, pot here that <clears throat> almost everybody has nowadays so people can make their own coffee anytime they want. But this is a uh, coffee bot, costs 15,000 euros. It's like a robot, a coffee robot. Anyway, it's pretty fantastic. So uh, talk about the six dining venues. It's hard to believe that we can get six dining venues on a small ship like this. But our primary dining is in the crystal dining room downstairs. It will comfortably seat everybody in one seating, all 169 passengers, but it's never crowded. Uh, because we have the other dining choices as well, and so uh, it's pretty easy. They just uh, we typically dinner will start at seven or whatever, and people can come whenever they want between say seven and eight, and easily find a table. Uh, the <coughs> the dining itself, uh, breakfast is a large buffet. It's got everything you can possibly imagine uh, on that buffet, and very fresh, uh, healthy things. And also, all those things that maybe aren't so healthy. Uh, omelet station, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. So you find, start the day off with a great meal. And then the lunches are also typically a buffet. And they will, uh, with some a la carte options as well. And then uh, dinner is a la carte. And it's usually uh, specialty dinners, like this would be the seafood dinner, the Captain's Gala dinner, the, the local uh, dinners uh, featuring the local foods of the areas for cruising in. So it's quite a wonderful experience and the food is outstanding. Uh, the chefs are trained in the best places. So it's a uh, really, a, from a food, food standpoint, uh, uh, a wonderful experience for your clients. The other next dining choice, uh, this would be Portobello. This is an uh, Italian restaurant. In, on our French cruises, it's L'Amour. It's a French restaurant. 
but uh, it's located in the back of the lounge, which is actually the front of the ship. There's an area there that during the day people sit and relax, read and check their emails and just watch the world go by. And in the evening we transform it into this Italian restaurant for about 30 of our clients. Uh, they simply tell about which night they would like to dine and everybody on board would have the opportunity to dine here. Now, these guys are models. We really don't require ties and coats. Uh, that's optional for people if they want to. There is, the only dress code is no shorts and jeans at dinner. Other than that, they can just, just you know, kind of a country club casual type of effect. Uh, but um, you'll find people, some people like to get dressed up, some don't. But no suits, no ties, no tuxedos, not required. The next dining choice, this is a table to read. This is a special table. It's like a captain's table that you'll see on the ocean ships. It's set up in the back of the dining room. This is right in front of the kitchen. And most of the kitchens on the ships are in the bow of the ship. And so this, the chef will come out uh, and announce every serving of the six servings and the wine pairing. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. It only takes 10 people uh, at this table, so we cannot accommodate everybody on board the ship. So we reserve it for people who have reserved the cabin on the diamond deck, which is our top deck, or perhaps one of the junior suites on the second deck. They will be invited. Again, they tell their butler which night they would like to. If they're part of a group, we'll try to get everybody together, of course. Uh, but it's, if you have clients that like this type of experience, chef dinner, wine dinner, those types of things, it's not all that much more to upgrade to the diamond deck. Next dining choice, this is the River Cafe. This is a deli area. This is the main bar uh, area. You can see where we're looking at that coffee pot and the screen over back up in the back here. That's the central lobby out there. So it's a really large uh, lounge area, a large bar area. But this starts in the morning at 6.30 for early rise with breakfast. So you can get up early and have coffee or Bloody Mary or whatever. And there's some light food. So check, the, check the email, check the, check the news, look out and see, get your bearings where we are on the river, uh, and then during the day it transforms into a deli with soup, sandwiches, salads, wraps, hamburgers, things like that, uh, that people can kind of come and go and get food during the day. If they don't want to get a big buffet lunch, they can come up here. If they want to uh, get a picnic lunch, they can do that quite easily and take that ashore or take it up on the top and uh, uh, enjoy the sunshine. And then in the afternoon it, it reverts to the English tea time or perhaps uh, cognac or whatever people like uh, and the sweets uh, right before dinner. You can have some nice uh, eclairs and whatnot. Uh, and then the final uh, next dining choice is uh, our alfresco dining up on the deck. So this is the sun deck up on top of the ship. So you could just imagine uh, on days where we're not out touring around or something having a beautiful lunch up here, especially on days when we're cruising like through the Rhine Gorge or the Waha Valley, sitting out there having this beautiful uh, serving of lunch and barbecuing and whatever, uh, but having your favorite drink and just watching the, the Rhine Gorge, the 40 castles go by, and, and you've got a GPS unit that's going to tell you which castle is which, and you've got your favorite drink, champagne or, or cocktail or wine or beer or, or mineral water, whatever. And it's just a fabulous, memorable experience. Last but not least, there are friendly butlers who serve room service in most of the cabins. Again, the smaller ones are sometimes a little bit small for that, but uh, it's possible. Uh, but they can have certainly lunch, breakfast, and lunch, or dinner served in their cabin on their deck, uh, for example. Nice service. Accommodation. So this is our lowest category accommodation. These are the ones right down by the water level. We only have 14, which is less than most people I have, because uh, we have more crew members, so they, they get the other cabins. This is typically the cabin that's left over, too. When you see availability and there's one, one or two cabins left, it's going to be the category D and E down here at this, uh, this level. They love the cabins, uh, 160 square feet, larger than most others uh, of that category. Uh, all the features are the same as the other cabins. They just don't have the balcony, and so they aren't quite as large. But beautiful bathrooms and beautiful sheets and linens, etc. The primary category for most of the cabins is our private balcony suites, 205 square feet. These are on the second, third deck. 
Uh, these have the balcony. You can see the beautiful decor, very warm, comfortable uh, feel to it all. And then the balcony, which is going to really become part of the cabin. You'll see a little bit later that the newer ships actually have an accordion fold uh, type door, so it opens all the way. The whole opening is open, and you never really have to close it because you can close this outer glass panel. The push of a button on the wall here, it would go up and down. I'll show you that in a minute how that works. This is a deluxe uh, new category in the last uh, two years. A deluxe balcony, a little bit bigger. It looks very large here because of the taking the, the wide photo uh, to fit the whole bed and everything in. Beautiful picture of the Parliament building in Budapest there. Um, but you can see the beautiful deck, the rattan chairs, etc. So here's a couple on the deck itself. You can see the track on the side, so you push a button and the second pane will go up or down. And you can stop it short so you can have some fresh air at night. But you never really have to close the door out to your balcony. And the nice thing is that you can you can enjoy your balcony uh, a lot more if it's cold, wet, windy, noisy, whatever. You can still enclose it and still enjoy sitting out there in that beautiful ambiance. So a mini bar in each cabin, that's going to be stocked, uh, similar to your client going on region or one of the other upscale uh, river ocean cruise lines. Uh, they can just pre-select what they want to have in their mini bar. They just tell the room steward. So if they want it full of scotch or vodka or wine or beer or you name it, champagne, uh, that will be done and restocked every day. The bathrooms are very lavish. Uh, they got L'Occitane. Uh, lotions and whatnot. Uh, the water pressure is tremendous. You've got three different nozzle areas here, so you basically can you know, hose off any part of your body you want. <laughs> so it's very, but the water pressure was phenomenal. That was surprising to me. <clears throat> this is a junior suite. It's a little bit larger than our regular balcony suites, and it's larger and that it's wider, and you can see there's pretty good distance here between the bed and the chair. Uh, this would be a good room for people that might be uh, using walkers or wheelchairs uh, to get around a little bit. Uh, these are also typically right next to the elevator, so we do have an elevator. And this is a great way for uh, those people to uh, be able to enjoy their cabin without bumping into things. Uh, we will accommodate that as best we can. We're going to talk about Royal Suites and Royal Panorama Suites with those. In a couple of the junior suites, you'll get a bathtub as well as the shower. Not all the junior suites do that, so you have to be aware of that. But beautiful bathrooms. This is the Royal Suite, uh, 315 square feet currently on the ships. The two new ships, which are Opal and Jasper, are in the water. This is their first week of sailing this week. So they did increase the size of the Royal Suite and the Royal Panorama on those new ships. You can see it's a beautiful, uh, almost a one-bedroom type of effect with the sitting area. Uh, Gorgeous rooms. These are typically midship. And then in the back of the ship, uh, we have our Royal Panorama Suites. The ships up till now have been 325 square foot one room suites, which are absolutely gorgeous. Then they, uh, with the gym, which uh, we announced last August, put it on the Seine River out of Paris, they invented the uh, idea of a one bedroom suite, 455 square feet. And the two new ships in service now. 475 square foot one bedroom suites. Uh, there is an, uh, this area, the bedroom can be cut off from the whole area. You can see here with the accordion fold that that balcony looks like it's part of the cabin. So it's a lovely area. They can close that off or they can just keep it open and just close, close the outer uh, panel. And in the back, this big panorama window is looking right out the back of the ship, down at the wake. And just sit there and have some champagne and watch the world go by. Uh, they're lovely cabins. They're a lot of room, more room than anybody else has in a, in a suite on the river cruises in Europe. Uh, and, you know, maybe not necessary to have that much room, but they're also out. So, and the first things they're selling for 2016 are these big suites. So there are people that like them and want them, and they go pretty quick. Technology wise, uh, state of the art. So we have an uh, infotainment system. Uh, in every cabin, this is where not only can you watch movies and uh, you know, BBC and CNN and things like that, but also uh, just the river view system, so you can your customer can actually see where we're going to the ship's going to be tomorrow. Delve into some of the history and culture of that area to get more familiar with it ahead of time. 
Uh, the only icon here that doesn't make a lot of sense is the invoice icon. Uh, Eighty-some percent of our clients never have an invoice because everything is, is uh, included in the price. Uh, the only way to get an invoice is if they had a massage, uh, a haircut, or maybe bought uh, something in the very small gift shop that we have. We also have the Mac Mini computer device over here in the right. Every every cabin has one of those, so they don't really have to take their laptop. This is a picture I just got. This is the first picture that I've received of the new ships. Hope on Jasper to have this vitality pool on their deck. So you have a you can get, uh, I think, up to 10, 10, 12 people in there pretty comfortably. <coughs> Excuse me. Entertainment on board. Full climb entertainer, of course, uh, who, who is playing uh, whatever type of music is appropriate for the event. Could be lunch, could be a uh, sport talk, uh, dinner time, after dinner, uh, change genres, all that stuff. Uh, but we also bring in local entertainment where we can. And this year, uh, with Scenic, we're bringing in uh, additional entertainment besides just uh, the Oompa Band. We'll bring in perhaps uh, people that are local arts and crafts specialists to, to show us how certain things are made in certain areas uh, and get people kind of in, involved in doing that. Uh, so it should be interesting. I've just heard about it. I have not uh, had the experience yet because it's brand new. So report more later in future webinars. <coughs> First and foremost, though, it's about the destination. That's why people take a river cruise. Uh, the ship is absolutely gorgeous. The service is impeccable. Uh, they have more choices and things to do on the ship. But it's kind of like you know, going anywhere, going to London. Uh, it's nice to stay in the Four Seasons. It makes it nice to but not, not necessary. The reason you go to London is to see London and experience London. And that's the same in a river cruise because the ship is really your your hotel, your restaurant, your transportation to take you to these wonderful destinations. So that's a heavy focus of Scenic and where Scenic shines above and beyond everybody else in the river cruise business is all the choices we give people to experience these destinations. This thing is our Scenic Highlights, which are where we use the local professional uh, city guides, tour guides, uh, who we prepay handsomely for their tips and gratuities, so we tend to get some of the best. and. Uh, they take the clients around. There is the whisper box type thing, which ours is the GPS powered unit. So I'll show you that in a minute. But they can hear the guides easily. There's a scenic free choice. These are the different tours. Uh, rather than just a city walking tour, this, these are the tours that were brought into the famous places in the countryside or uh, wherever around particular destinations. There'll be several choices each day. They can't do them all but uh, they need to make a choice which one they want to do. So, for instance, in uh, Passau in southwest, uh, or southeast Germany, uh, they have the choice to have a city tour, short city walking tour of Passau, which is a very large. Then they can go to either Chesney Krumlop in, in the Czech Republic, or they can go to Salzburg. So it can be all day trips with lunch included, and then the ship moves along, and they, they catch up with the ship in the next port. So. Uh, that's kind of the choice. Uh, in our in our brochure, uh, you actually see the free, the free choice. So in Amsterdam, here's three of them here. Budapest, here's three. Here's the ones in Passau. Uh, so you have you can see very easily for your client that they have a lot of different things each day. They can start planning which one they they want to do uh, each day. It's also explained in detail in the itinerary itself for each itinerary and uh, what the choices are each day. Uh, the only ones we pre-book are the ones the first couple of days, so we know ahead of time kind of what people want to do. Uh, then after that, they just let the cruise director know what they want to do or or the on the ship. And then our bikes. I mentioned that earlier. So our bikes, a lot of cruise lines have bikes, but ours are electrically assisted bikes, and that means that they have a little electrical power associated with them. So. That People who may get tired or may not be able to make it up the hill, won't be embarrassed and whatnot, they can uh, have some power to assist them. I call them booster bikes. Uh, so you need a little extra boost to get up the hill or your legs are getting tired. Uh, so what it does is opens up this opportunity to people that might be otherwise intimidated to take the bike out. Uh, and the bike trips themselves is typically one or two uh, guided trips for a week. Um, and people. Uh, just love those. They, they give 
people the ability to get to places that otherwise they probably wouldn't have gotten to. It's too far to walk, and the tourists don't go there. So I've done several of these. They are fantastic. Uh, and then if you want to go out on your own, we have the GPS unit that you can do that and get guided. So the GPS, we call them the tailor-made, scenic tailor-made. Here's two units here that are in the – each cabin's got two of these in a docking station. They just take them out in the morning. These would be the hearing device if they're on a guided tour. But if they want to go out on their own and visit, so if you want to go and see the Rembrandt locations uh, in Amsterdam, the, where he grew up and uh, where his paintings are and where his, uh, different statues are, things like that, uh, you simply uh, it's preloaded with these tours. You simply click on it, it starts to guide you, like any GPS unit, uh, to walk to certain places to, and then it will do a narration about that particular place. And if people want to go out on their own and uh, use this it's without the tour, then they can walk along knowing that they'll be able to find their way back to the ship. The ship's right here, so they'll find their way back and uh, have a good time. And it will also ping or vibrate uh, when they're coming uh, near to a, a famous spot. And we have over a thousand different uh, locations that are in the system. So if they're coming up to a, a statue or a building, a museum, whatever, uh, it will uh, let them know that that's uh, you know, up one block forward, two blocks to the right, you'll, you'll see the such and such. So it just, again, adds a completely new dimension for people to, to experience these destinations a little bit more independently and on their own without being intimidated by the fact that they're wandering out there in a foreign place and they don't speak the language and they're probably going to miss the ship and oh, heck's going to happen. So you take that fear out of them and give them the ability to really enjoy the destination uh, in a number of different ways. No, but this is a proprietary device just for seeing. So to top it off, we have our, our our very exclusive events, Scenic and Rich, and new this year, Scenic Sundowners. So the Scenic and Rich are the events like in, this is a picture of the Marksburg Castle on the Rhine River. The Marksburg Castle is one of the best preserved medieval castles on the Rhine or almost anywhere. Uh, I've been in there. It's uh, got amazing uh, relics and things from the past, all the armors and everything that the knights would wear. Uh, so most of the ship's uh, itineraries will include this as part of a tour. Uh, some charge for it, some don't, uh, and go up there and be able to look around. Scenic actually rents the uh, castle at night and has a medieval dinner in there just for our guests. In Vienna, for example, we uh, everybody in Vienna has the option uh, with almost all river cruise companies to do a Viennese concert and ballet. Uh, again, some of the cruise lines uh, charge for that. The first time I did that, I was charged for it, but we went into this uh, nice uh, concert hall in Vienna. And we were one of five or six, seven groups. It was it was pretty crowded actually, sitting in those little folding chairs. Uh, but we had a great experience. And then uh, last year, I had the opportunity to go with Scenic and do their Scenic and Rich uh, Viennese concert and ballet in the Palais Liechtenstein that they rent at night. This beautiful, gorgeous palace uh, owned by the Liechtenstein royalty, and uh, come in and have a champagne reception by this beautiful golden gold cart carriage and then go into this gorgeous room uh, and have our own private concert. It was you know, jaw-dropping experience. So that's the kind of experiences in France where we have a private concert in a chateau. Uh, so different events, even in France on the Rhone, uh, our special experience on the Rhone River is a dinner in the Palais de Pop, which was in the, in the church that was you know, the Vatican back in the 1300s. So it's quite the historical spot. And just imagine being that gorgeous room with just our people in there, 169 people. Quite an experience. Sundowners. Sundowners is new this year. <clears throat> this is where one afternoon a week we'll set up a bar out in the in a vineyard or at a chateau or whatever it might be. Uh, toast the day and toast a great cruise and create another, another memorable uh, moment for everybody. So here's our itineraries. I've run through these, assuming you all pretty much know what these are like. But we've got the Rhine River, which goes between Amsterdam and Basel, Switzerland. So you've got an eight-day, basically a one-week and a two-week 
Gooey because it's Moselle and also some of Belgium. So a wonderful, wonderful trip there. Uh, one of the most popular two-week trips is Amsterdam to Budapest. This is a great uh, opportunity for people to just experience a lot of different cultures in Europe in, in two weeks, going through five five different countries and three different rivers that are connected by canals, uh, 68 locks. I mean, you get the full experience, Amsterdam, Budapest, or Budapest, Amsterdam. Uh, very popular. And the most popular one-week trip uh, for almost all the river cruise companies would be the Danube between Nuremberg and Budapest, and uh, probably because it's just uh, the mystique of Eastern Europe uh, is attractive to a lot of people who want to experience that. It's also great to add a, a three-day extension in Prague, which we have, we offer, and uh, recommend that highly for your customer. The Danube, the southern part of the Danube from Budapest south all the way to the Black Sea, that's another choice uh, of itinerary. We have the tulip time itineraries, which are this time of year. We'll have uh, the next two weeks uh, of April and the first week of May, and I'm actually taking my wife on the one in May uh, so that she can experience scenic. She hasn't had that opportunity yet, so I'd like to give her that. And then we have the Christmas time later in the year. In France, we do the Seine River, which is a Paris to Hunter round trip. I'll show you that in a minute. The Rhone, we have both a one-week and two-week trip on the Rhone, which is fabulous. And Bordeaux is new this year, and we can actually combine these cruises for people who have more time. So on the Seine, it's a round trip out of Paris. We take a very leisurely, wonderful cruise, spend a lot of time enjoying these areas, Gaberni, uh, Monet's area he grew up in and painted. And then, uh, We've got Ruin, where uh, we spent a couple of days here actually giving people the chef's cooking classes. There's all kinds of things going on there. And then our ship, unusual, uh, one of the few that actually goes all the way to Huntsler, most stop, and it's an hour and a half each way. But you've got your customer to get to see the Normandy beaches, which is one of the highlights of these trips. Uh, but we go all the way to Huntsler, which is a beautiful port. And very famous, uh, and it's just a hop and a skip over to the Normandy beaches and some of those famous areas. Very unique. In uh, Russia, we have one ship. It's the smallest, but it's the most recently uh, rebuilt ship uh, in Russia. The Russian government owns all the halls up there, but we are, were able to build a very uh, modern ship. It's not our typical quote, spaceship. It doesn't have all the services our other cruises do. There's limitations up in Russia. Uh, so we have wine and beer at lunch and dinner. A lot of vodka tastings, I understand. And uh, no butler service, uh, no GPS, no bikes. Can't do that in Russia too easily. So these are our ships currently. Uh, like I said, we have 12 ships. Uh, all of them are 443 feet in length except two. So you see the, the gem, which takes 128 passengers, and the czar, that takes 112 passengers. New for 2016, we're building a ship for the Doral River, and we're building a ship for the Mekong River. Both will be very special itineraries, a very special ship. Uh, and I'm going to show you more, those in more detail. We have a couple charters, Irrawaddy and Antarctica. Just a few dates on those, so that's selling pretty quick. Oh, movies. So uh, this is our uh, scenic spirit that's being built currently for the Mekong. It's a small ship, 34 one-bedroom suites. The smallest suite is 355 square feet. The largest is 650 square feet. Those are the Royal Panorama. And instead of being on the back of the ship, like our other ships, there are actually these two in the top of the ship in the front because they have a huge balcony, 200 square foot balcony, with a jacuzzi and a day bed, so you can get some nice breeze while you're sitting on the balcony. It's a little hot and humid there. This is the lounge area. Uh, again, it's pretty small. This is only uh, 68 passengers. The main dining room. The suites, we have 24 of the uh, deluxe suites that are 344 square feet. Uh, but they're one bedrooms. So you've got a bedroom area, and you've got a sitting area with the deck out here. Kind of an interior deck. Uh, very, very nice. With the windows that go up and down like the other ships. Then you have eight grand deluxe suites, four in the 30s. Very similar, but uh, just larger. And then this is the big royal panorama, 864 foot when you include the deck. So it's huge. They're in the front of the ship. Uh, I mean, you have walk-in wardrobe. You have, you know, it's got everything. 
You could live in one of these rooms, I think. It's just beautiful. <clears throat> you get a little, some extra amenities with that suite, of course. There's a picture of the rendering of what it's going to look like. The jacuzzi would be over here and on the left, the day bed. Uh, pretty darn nice. So, recap, the ship's got 34 cabins, four decks, all cabins are one-bedroom suites. Uh, you have the sun lounge, which is the window that on the balcony that goes up and down, so you can close it like a sunroom. You've got a pool in the back. The pool is actually going to be one of the dining areas. The pool also uh, will be turned into an open-air cinema at night. One-to-one -one staff ratio, pretty good. Four dining choices, butler service, my guest laundry, uh, all beverages of all types all day. So tips and gratuities are included. There's the dining choices. One, two, three, four, five. Has up to five, so room service. And just a couple pictures. So some of the things we include. The puppet show is Tom Penn, which is pretty famous. And we have several itineraries. I think there's uh, five or six different itineraries. Uh, the Mekong itself, the cruise is only seven days, so uh, people would typically add on to that. This would be if you want to include Hanoi and Halong Bay and, and some of the famous areas. Uh, you can do that. There's, a, there's another one that would spend more time up in Cambodia. There's one that goes up into Laos. There's one that goes up into Thailand. So different choices for people to make a full trip out of it, but the cruise itself is just seven days. So in Miramar, we have a couple charters, only three charters in 2016. And uh, this is a, a, a ship that we charter. It's all one-bedroom suites again. It's nice on the Irrawaddy River. <clears throat> so on the Doro River, this one is uh, going to be really special. Again, we're building a special ship, and again, uh, Mr. Maroney, the owner, uh, wondered why all the other cruise, river cruise companies had the identical itineraries, and it was because they used the same local ground operator who owns the docks and kind of dictates the schedule. Uh, he said, well, it's missing some things I think are really important, so he built his own ship, or built some of, his, some of his own docks and his own itinerary. That'd be different from what other people in this beautiful area of parts of Portugal. So it's got 48 cabins, a smaller ship, one to two staff ratio. So it does have a pool. It's going to be a little warmer there. The five dining venues, butler service, all inclusive beverages, Wi Fi. Does not have the e bikes and does not have the tailor made. <coughs> Six standard rooms, smaller rooms, 40 balcony suites, and then two of the big panorama suites. Those out of Porto, there's an, there's an additional uh, pre. You can add for three days in Lisbon, uh, but it goes up and spends. Uh, you spend a couple of days in Porto. Uh, you include some things that others don't typically include, like Casa de Paco, which is where the original king of Portugal, the founder of Portugal, basically, he grew up. It's a very famous, and important place for the Portuguese, and Mr. Moroni thought it's an important place for us to visit. So he actually has a uh, an event up there that we all uh, take part in, and it's a wonderful experience. Coa Valley, this is the, where the most ancient artifacts have been found as part of Portugal. So again, that's important to the Portuguese, so we, we take our people up there, our clients, to, to see that and experience that. And then at the top of the river where we stop for two days, we take a full day excursion into Salmonaca, Spain, and have a beautiful lunch up there. Uh, it's quite the experience for your client. So here's some pictures. This is where our scenic sundowners will be. This is in the area along the river where the white port wines come from. So Manata, Coa Valley. And we end the trip back in Porto with a beautiful scenic and rich dinner in the Arabian room, which is uh, not exactly understated. <laughs> and then at the Antarctica, we have a few cruises. This is an off ship, the Boreal. Uh, so it's going uh, experiences. Antarctica and style. Uh, so that's that. So let's talk about how you book these these fun cruises. So uh, you got to book early. We're booking well into 2016 now. Uh, we get early booking discounts. So when you book early, 
there's three levels, and they, they change based on date. So in 2015 bookings, uh, the first level expired the end of October of 2014. The second one is last February. The third level is when final payment is due, which is 90 days prior to departure. So to book, you only need a $500 non-refundable deposit per person. And then the final is due 90 days prior. So if you're booking now for 2016, Say for uh, sailing for September, your client can get that, get the best selection of rooms and itinerary and dates, and get the best early booking discount. Right now, in fact, it's uh, the 2016 prices have not come out yet, so we're still honoring the 2015 prices. That will change uh, mid to late May, so they've got about a month left to get your customer the best deal out there. They simply pay the $500 per person deposit. And then they don't owe the final. If it's for September 2016, the final will be due in June of 2016. So, uh, heck of a deal for them to lock in the, the beautiful cabin and the itinerary that's best for them. And then they don't have to worry about coming up with cash for uh, almost another year. So, uh, that's a great opportunity. Now, the book, there's two choices there's Reservation Center, you can call in, and there's also a very easy online booking engine, which I'll show you in a minute. The call-in option, uh, the best thing, we have uh, set up a whole new uh, reservation department in Boston, our massive uh, Boston, our USA office. Uh, it's backed up by the Vancouver, British Columbia office. Uh, but so we've added like 12 reservation people there, so it's uh, you can actually get through quite often on call. If you can't and they put you on hold, then there will be an, uh, an option that comes on in 15, 20 seconds for you to call back. And, you're in the queue, and I encourage you, if you're busy and have other things to do, to go ahead and just leave the number, and I'll call you back as soon as I can. Uh, but the easiest thing to do is the online booking engine, and you access that. You have to get a username and password, and you access it by clicking on the agent site. But you know, before that, there's an awful lot of uh, interesting uh, and additional information on this site. So if you click on the agent site, it's going to look like this right now. Until they change it next month sometime with a new branding. But anyway, there's a couple of things. Here's the booking engine. Here's where you order brochures. As an agent, you can order up to 10 brochures. Here's our group policy. This is our your contact for your local representatives from Scenic. And Scenic Specialist Program, I'll show you that in a minute. That's important. That's how you get to that. And then the media gallery is where we have some of the videos we can't show uh, in the GoToMeeting presentation, but you might want to go there. You can show them to your customer. It shows all about the different uh, choices you have on shore, the scenic and rich uh, events, the GPS, so you can show them a little bit more detail. But if you click on the booking engine, it's not just a booking engine. I really uh, think it's a sales engine as well because I, if I have somebody like in this case wants to go on the Sand River, I can very quickly pull up uh, put the code in for the Sand, which is SEI, and I'll put in uh, if I put in June 2015, it's going to pull up any sailings that have still have one cabin or more left uh, in May, June, July. And then if I click on the plus button for this particular date, it's going to show me, yep, but the only cabins left are the standard suite, the D&E. There's one single that happens to be available. So uh, it's very limited. If I clicked on 2016, you can see that I've got all these different categories available. Then if I click on any one of these, I'm going to look at the actual deck plan, the live inventory, which cabins are still available. Really handy if you have customers that where there's two, maybe two couples. Maybe they were looking for the Royal Panorama Suite. Maybe this is the only sailing that's got the two left, and you can easily see that, tell it to them, and for $500, they can immediately lock that in. And it's theirs uh, to, to know that they have until they take the trip. So. Very easy program to work with. We do have early booking discounts for 2016 currently available. So these are all based on, in, on space availability. So as the space fills up, uh, they may be taken out and not and no longer available. You don't know that until you actually go through the reservation process, either online or call reservation people, which early bookings are still appropriate for that particular sailing. And when you do compare river cruises, it's important to to look at certain things uh, so you put your customer in the right one uh, you know if they like larger cabins uh, some you know senior captains have larger cabins than most others the crew ratio of three to one is great 
dining choices. Some people like to have different choices. They like room service. They like having this mini bars so they can have some drinks without being charged for them, things like that. Uh, some, they like the, the butler service, of course. The balconies are important to a lot of people. The GPS is a huge selling feature that nobody else offers, uh, so they can have a little more independence and go out on their own if they want. Uh, transfers are important. Tips, gratuities, all being prepaid. It takes that intimidation factor of not knowing exactly how much to tip. Takes that away. It takes it off the table. So they have a great time, whereas most of the others do do not include that. And then of course the short excursions and our exclusive memorable events. That's really important. Then you can get the price and payment policy where we don't make you pay up front in order to get the special deals or anything. Uh, and what's included, of course. This is a scenic specialist program, so you can go through and take this program pretty quick, take the quiz, pass the quiz, and then you'll be eligible for a $100 bonus commission per person on your first booking within six months. You simply make the booking, and then you send the booking number to your representative, and we'll verify everything and send you a debit card for roughly $200 to two people. So I encourage you to do that before you make your first so now I'm going to show you this little video on Scenic that just came out yesterday, so it's you know, the first to see it. It will give you a flavor for our new uh, mantra, if you want to call it, our new marketing angle that we're going to take in the, in, throughout the entire world from a marketing you enjoyed that and with that uh, I am done here's the list of the uh, current uh, representatives for both scenic and emerald and if you're in Canada you need to go through the Canadian offices but uh, I kind of cover whatever is not currently being covered so we're, we're increasing to this staff all the time but if you need to get a hold of one of us this is how you do it with that I'll take some questions Andy Great. Thanks, Randy. That was fantastic. Um, we have several questions. I don't know if we'll get to all of them. So I want to let our agents know that if we can't get to your question, please uh, email uh, your uh, representative. Do you see the numbers on the screen or Randy for an answer to your questions? Uh, Randy, do you, does uh, Scenic offer uh, pre and post cruise hotel space? And uh, can agents book their clients' air through Scenic, and is it commissionable? Uh, yes, we have the pre and post in, in a lot of destinations, not all, but in a lot of them. And I highly recommend it, especially for the Prague, uh, just because it's a good distance from Prague to get to the boat. Uh, um, so it's important, I think, to, to that one in particular. The other is you can either do something yourself or see if we have something to offer uh, and we're happy to do that and we do have air uh, we're not big where we have our own air agreements in the United States market we're getting bigger with 
So someday that might happen, but right now we will help you uh, get the air. Uh, we quite often would do free air for special promotions, which we're doing currently. We have a promotion uh, for 2015. The space is left uh, primarily in France. There's a free air offer for any cabin. Uh, our standard free air offer is usually just for the lowest price category, so that's unusual. Uh, let's just check us out and see if it's a better deal for you than doing it yourself. Okay, great. Uh, you showed some pictures and mentioned uh, breakfast and lunch buffets. Uh, are those two meals also available in the dining room uh, off of the menu? Uh, well, not in breakfast, typically not, but if they, somebody wants something eggs a certain style, that would be done for them uh, for breakfast. Uh, for lunch, if they prefer, uh, they can have a sandwich, a hamburger, or something that might not be on the, the buffet. And also, they've got the option of the deli up above, too. Okay. Uh, do all of the ships have elevators? Yes. And all of the specialty restaurants are included in the price? Yes. Yes, except, you know, the, uh, the table of reeve uh, is included in the price if you have booked a particular cabin type. Otherwise, if you just we don't have enough room to take everybody on board. Okay. Um, do you have uh, paper documents that you send out, or are they e-documents? Or yeah, we have real documents. No, you get uh, in fact, it's fantastic. Uh, you get a backpack and uh, you get a, a wallet uh, with the documents in it, with a detailed itinerary uh, and all that. So it's it's actually very nice and bag tags all the whole nine yards. That sounds great. Uh, is there available either on the um, website or in paper some kind of a travel agent guide with all of the ships listed and compared and uh, comparing it to other uh, other river cruise companies as well? There's a comparison uh, in the agent site, uh, which is done by a third party. Mm -hmm. It's a couple years old now, so it didn't include all the ships. Uh, the Scenic Specialist Program also has all that information. Of course, their brochures have a wealth of information in them. Um, the scenic specialist, we we now now that we got the new branding, we'll have to update that. But that's, that's uh, got a wealth of information in it. That's why we want you to uh, go through that program uh, in order to qualify for the bonus commission, but just to learn more about our product. Okay. And uh, what's a typical um, agent commission starting at? Well, our, commission, our volume commission in the U.S. market is 12 percent. That can go up uh, if you develop a relationship with your agency. If you're going to do some marketing. You take the specialist program, things like that. Uh, but uh, just don't offer it across the board, just anybody. Okay. And I know that you said this was on the uh, website, but just briefly, uh, give us a little information about group bookings. How many cabins make up a, bo a group, and is there a tour conductor included? Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 we have a, a two, two categories. One is uh, our shorter one-week type trips and then our two-week trips. So the one week is five cabins. Uh, the tenth person is tour conductor. And two weeks is typically the fifteenth person is uh, the tour conductor. Uh, and there's a negotiated uh, discount uh, with that. Uh, we have a, you can see here on the, on the slide, Jerry Hamilton manages the group department, so you want to get hold of her. She can give you a quotation. Okay, excellent. You mentioned that laundry services are included. Are we talking about self-service laundry, where people go in and use the washers and dryers, or is this a ship uh, done laundry? Well, now it's a different ship. So the, I think the self-service laundry uh, was on the ship in uh, Mekong, the new ship for next year. Uh, we don't have a self-service laundry on the other ships. There is laundry service available. The, uh, the big suites and whatnot, that's all included. The front will take care of all that. Uh, but in the smaller cabins, uh, there may be a charge for some laundry service. Okay. We have time for just a couple of more short questions. Uh, does Scenic do any theme cruises? Uh, not really, unless there's a charter or something going on. It's, uh, the whole theme is the destination itself. There's so much there to, to absorb and take in. That, uh, we're, we're not currently doing that. Watching is quite often a pretty common theme in the areas we go to. But, uh, it's, it's, we're gonna, we bring on some local 
uh, people to chat about the areas and whatnot, so people can, if you're talking about just strictly a wine cruise or something else, no, not this. Okay, and our last question is about FAMS and travel agent rates. Can you tell us Scenic's policy about that? Yeah, our policy now is we have a couple, a couple of different options. Uh, if you wanted to book way ahead for some reason, uh, um, way ahead in this case is more than four months out. Uh, it's strictly just a 20% discount, so it's not a great deal compared to what you're typically used to. Uh, but if you can book within four months, then it's a great deal. It's uh, 495 uh, for an agent and 995 for a companion if they're not an agent. Uh, but it is based on availability. We do require that you have taken the specialist course, so you know something. You've shown that you, you really are one interested. You have a clientele that likes this type of upscale uh, program, and uh, you're willing to do some marketing and, and whatnot when you come back if you. you if you have the experience, which you are absolutely love. Uh, so we just want to, be, and then it's based on availability. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, you, know, you need to get access to the booking engine, which you simply can do by sending your contact information, your IATA, or, or CLIA number, into info at sceniccruises.com, asking to get uh, access to the, uh, what we call express books, the online booking engine. And then they will send you back the username, password, and instructions. But once you have that, uh, then you can go in and quickly look at availability. You find a sailing that's got decent availability still on it, uh, which is not a whole lot for 15. But I might look at France, I might have the best. Uh, and then you contact your representative and say that you would like to do this. You pass the course, you see the availability, and then they'll go to reservations and see if they can get that approved. So, we can't guarantee it, but if it's there, we want you to get on board. Fantastic. Thank you. We don't have uh, time for any more questions. Uh, if you have more questions, please uh, get in touch with your BDM. Uh, the numbers and emails are all on the screen, and, uh, and I'm sure they'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Our guest today has been Randy Goodrich, trainer and business development manager for both Scenic and Emerald Waterways. Thank you, as always, Randy. This was terrific. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for taking the time. And thanks to all of our agents signed into this call. We really appreciate your being here, and we will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.